Hey guys, it's me, Derek, and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk About Video Games, because I like to talk about video games sometimes, and sometimes it helps, just helps me. But anyways, uh, last couple days I've been playing Sea of Thieves, it's a Microsoft exclusive coming out, it's on PC, Xbox One, and I don't know if it's, I don't think it's going to come out on anything else except for those two platforms, um, probably not on Steam. Uh, I'm not sure yet, but I think mainly it's going to be on the X Microsoft Store. Store, so be sure to check that out. If you was to pre-order it, you was able to get the beta, uh, alpha, I mean. And so far, I'm gonna have to go ahead and tell you this: this is probably one of my most anticipated games of 2018. Um, you know, one of the things I really love to do back in the day is. Uh, I used to go see the Pirates of the Caribbean films. Uh, me and my friend at the time, we would dress up, go see every single one of them that came out in theaters, uh, dress up like pirates, or, uh, you know, playing Assassin's Creed 3 and 4, where you got to have those naval battles. And this kind of reminds me of that just a little bit. Um, it's also really good to see that uh, Rareware, well, Rare, is actually working on something that's not a Kinect title. Um, if the rumors are true, Hopefully, we get a conquer or something. That would be amazing. Uh, but no, uh, you know, when this game was first announced, uh, I was intrigued by it. It seemed like it was, you know, stuff a niche, something that's not going to be very popular. But whenever they released the alpha, some crazy things happened. Um, on Twitch, it became the number one uh, stream game for that specific time. Uh, it's it went back down to three or four at this point, but um, a new IP that you know just took off, you know, and reaching it as the top followed game on Twitch. That's that's kind of nuts uh, compared to all the um, <laughs> uh, competition that's going for it. Um, you know, I've probably put in at least a couple hours of it so far. I think it ends tomorrow. Uh, actually, I think it's the 31st. But uh, I'm going to play a little bit more. I've been mainly doing single player portion because I've never really been good at multiplayer. Um, I'm not a team player, if that makes sense. Um, I'm, I'm the guy that mains Hanzo. <laughs> but no, it's the game was fantastic. Um, just, just the sheer fact that, you know, I can, I have my own boat. I can go and meet other people befriend them, start uh, a crew if I wanted to, going to desert islands or islands and finding treasures, fighting off skeleton people. Um, there's a lot to this game. Uh, the what, best way I can compare this to is if Minecraft had a baby with Assassin's Creed, uh, Black Flag, and Diablo, maybe? Probably not. Probably not. Um, I can't really explain the game. And that, that's crazy, right? Um, and for the longest time while this game was being published, we knew hardly anything about it. Um, they kind of kept a shut eye on it. Uh, well, yeah, nobody really knew. We just know, hey, there's this pirate game out coming out. It's going to have you know multiplayer on it, and it's going to be crazy. Yay! I, I don't know what to feel about it. Then... You know, we started seeing more videos on it uh, than the Alpha, and it's coming out here, I believe, in February or March. And yeah, I was not prepared for it. Um, I, you know, I debated if I wanted to play the Alpha. I really did. I didn't know if I was going to. I, I wasn't really super interested in it. Um, I downloaded it, and it's really good. Uh, it's f polished, it seems. Um, you know, only a two hours into it, it seems. Like it's ready to go, um, and you know the game is pretty. It's got its own little art style, kind of similar to, say, maybe Overwatch or something. It's kind of cartoony. It's not like, um, you know, realistic. Um, but yeah, it's cool. The the physics, uh, the fact that you know you can shoot yourself out from a cannon, um, you know, change the direction of the ship with all the sails and whatnot, and drop an anchor. Um, and they have this hub world, sort of, when you die, um, you go to this, you know, ghost place. It kind of reminds me of uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, uh, the Black Pearl, I think that's 
what it was called, when you had the skeleton ghost people. Uh, the combat's fine. The controls are well done. Um, and like you said, it's crafting, so you can kind of consider it as a survival game. But it takes a lot of different ideas from the last uh, decade of video games and kind of smushed them into something that, you know, for all intents and purposes, could be completely special. Uh, I see this game you know, rising in popularity as soon as it comes out. I could also say this is a system seller. Um, you know, I'm not saying go out today and buy an Xbox One X, um, but if you have a PC or an Xbox One and you just want to go get an Xbox One S or something like that, this is probably going to be worth your while. Um, it's another one of those things that's a game as, game as a service. I didn't see any loot drops or anything like that or... Um, microtransactions but the game hasn't came out yet officially so I don't know where that's going to stand um, Rare used to be one of the greatest studios of all time um, you know you've seen games like Conquer, Donkey Kong Goldeneye, Perfect Dark um, Battletoads um, and the, they're, they're great I, I kind of hope that you know, they get back to that point, even though, you know, some of these people left and uh, joined studios to work on Time Splitters or Ukulele, um, you name it, There's, they've actually been around. Uh, the closest thing we ever got to a sequel to uh, Goldeneye was between Perfect Dark and probably Time Splitters 2. Um, they both made, made by that same team. But, you know, I kind of feel the spirit of Rare. Rarer games always had this typical quirkiness that not very many other games have, and it wasn't afraid to push the envelope. And it has always had a technical edge over its competitors. Um, some of the most beautiful looking SNES games came from that studio. Um, it kind of sucks that, you know, whenever they got acquired by Microsoft, that, you know, they became the Avatar Connect people. And, you know, they did have some decent games, which. You know, one of my favorites that came out on um, the last generation of consoles was, um, what was it called? Cameo. Um, it is a platformer. Um, you play as a fairy. And it's, it's, it's a good game. It, it was highly underrated. Uh, Nothing Bolts wasn't that bad either. It wasn't Banjo-Kazooie um, as we used to do it, but it was still a passable game. Um, Perfect Dark Zero was... Eh, you know, it was okay as a launch title, but, you know, you, you go back and play, it definitely shows its age. Um, but, yeah, I mean, we haven't seen a Conquer game. We haven't seen an official uh, Banjo-Kazooie, anything like that. We haven't seen that. Um, we haven't really seen much from Rare in the last, you know, few years since they've been acquired. So I'm hoping, since Microsoft's on this new kick on to try to get new IPs out, uh, which they desperately need these. They spent, desperately need IPs that are worth um, you know, worth a lot. And them announcing Game Pass was genius. I mean that's almost it's a game changer for sure. It sucks for retail. It sucks for retail. But you know what? You know, everything is going digital anyways. Um and Microsoft figured out a service that works. You know, Sony tried that with PlayStation Now. How many people use PlayStation Now? One, probably one person. Uh, Microsoft, how they got the edge on it is these are games you can download. They're pretty much yours until your service goes out. And now they added the fact that all new Microsoft Studio titles will be available day one on Game Pass, starting with um, Sea of Thieves. Which is pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. I don't even think it's that expensive. I think it's like fourteen ninety nine or nine ninety nine a month uh, for Game Pass. Which, you know, if if you're somebody that doesn't buy a lot of games, um, and you have decent internet, but you don't want to go out and spend sixty dollars on a game, uh, this gives you an option to try these out. Say, okay, uh, I don't want to buy this yet, but you know, I have it in the library of a hundred other different Xbox games. Um, maybe I should try it out, see if I like it. And if I like it, I can go ahead and just buy it. And I think you get a discount uh, on top of uh, that purchase if you have Game Pass, which is awesome. It's awesome. EA does it. Um, but, 
yeah, Game Pass is probably it's a game changer. I mean, definitely, uh, definitely can't wait to see where it goes. Like the next Halo, Crackdown, Fable, which is another thing announced was a new Fable game. Um, so that's coming, which that's exciting. That's super exciting. Um, but Microsoft seems to be really stepping up their game as of late. Uh, their sales are picking up. Sales. Get it? Because pirates. Yar! Uh, see, it. <sighs> never mind. <laughs> but anyways, you know, Microsoft seems to be picking up. You know, whenever they uh, came out with the original Xbox, it was considered the underdog. Um, then the Xbox 360 came out and was highly successful. The Xbox One had a rocky launch. Usually, uh, in terms of a systems, uh, new systems, usually the third one that's made has problems. And that's kind of true with all platforms. If you take a look, usually the third console has a little bit of problems. PlayStation 3 did, uh, and 64 did. Um, I believe, was, was, say it, was it the Sega Saturn? Sega Saturn, then the Dreamcast, which fuck the dreamcast was awesome damn it <laughs> uh, but anyways no um you know microsoft seems to be getting really good backwards compatibility um they you know they're t trying to get their hardcore people to buy a xbox one x but it's pretty much a souped up uh, mid-range pc if that uh, it's got the 4k visuals they're doing a whole lot more than what Sony is doing. Sony has the market though. Sony is definitely, they got the sales, they came out of the gate, you know, with strong sales just due to Microsoft's plunders, which was quite embarrassing, <laughs> quite embarrassing indeed. Um, I myself, I, I haven't purchased a physical game for at least five years. I, I just don't buy physical games. I switched to digital. Um, and you know, the Game Pass makes it super attractive. And, you know, I, I'm going to say this is a possibility. Um, I bet you anything, um, Sony will announce something very similar. They will redo the shitty PlayStation Now. They may call it something different, uh, or maybe PlayStation Pass or something stupid. Um, but I see that happening. Maybe Nintendo. I'm not sure yet. I think I don't think Nintendo will. Nintendo's still behind uh, on times a little bit, trying to come up with how to use their online features and virtual marketplaces. Um, yeah, and I, I do. There's already been backlash too on the Game Pass, mainly retailers. Uh, I believe it was a retailer bat in I think it's Australia. Um, and they said, you know, if you do the Game Pass, we're not selling your consoles. Well, I mean, you have companies like GameStop. They, you know, they'll, uh, they're going to lose money. That's perfectly fine to me because fuck GameStop. Um, yeah, it, it's just crazy. It's crazy. And I think this might be the smartest decision that... Um, Microsoft has ever made in terms of their gaming uh, platform. So them doing a gaming as a service really means gaming as a service similar to Netflix. And I see see it lasting quite a good while. I, I don't think it's going to have a rocky start. I think a lot of people are going to see the value proposition. They're going to try out games they never thought about trying before, um, especially like here, like Sea of Thieves. Um, it comes on games, Game Pass, so you know you're like, okay, uh, I want to try out Game Pass. I'm <laughs> Game Pass, so I can do CFEs. You know, play that game. I really like it, so I'm going to purchase that game, and you might get a discount on it just because you have Game Pass. Um, and that's cool. That's awesome. Uh, it's really pro consumer. Um, I don't see a problem of doing this. I don't. Maybe retail. I know retailers don't like it. They don't like the fact that gaming is going full digital. And it's true. We're going to be digital in the next 10 years. You'll probably not see very many brick and mortar game stores. Sure, there'll be physical copies available. I'm sure that's still going to be around. But, you know, GameStop's switching to collectibles. You have a lot of stores. Kmart doesn't even carry game consoles unless you go online. If you go to a Kmart, especially here in 
uh, my area, there are no video games or consoles or anything like that in our Kmart uh, <laughs> uh, electronic section. You just don't see it. You just don't. Um, and, you know, I used to be a collector of physical games, so I understand why you would want that. And like I said, I used to collect. Uh, this is something I had to, I sold. Um, but, no. Sea of Thieves is really good, and it really changed my mind on, you know, what I thought about it. And, yeah, I'm going to, in this video, you're going to see some gameplay. I actually used the, the capture uh, option on the Xbox One, which I totally forgot that option existed. Um, I'm a little late on my videos for this week. I just got done with a stream. Uh, we streamed Night of the Living Dead, which is a public domain film. So if you want to check that out, the Steam will be available on VOD, YouTube, Twitch, and I believe Mixer. Um, you can check that out. So I talk a little bit about the history of that movie and just have fun. Um, now, this will go out tonight should be in the morning sometime before you see this video um and yeah i hope you guys enjoyed be sure to share this hit the like and the subscribe button for more awesome things i love you guys and talk to you tomorrow or not tomorrow one day i'll talk to you